Ooh. Well, about to go in the apartments here. Detected. Who's the Brotherhood fighting against? Probably wherever we're supposed to be going. Right. Let's just see what's in the apartments here. I don't know if this is going to be a huge building with a lot of exploration or if it's just going to be a little room. Nothing there. No traps. Hey. Lock and load. Mission accomplished. Okay, that's not the only person here. Who? Legendary. They're both up there. Okay. Why did you all... I think I, was that a pulse grenade? Shoot. Yeah, that's gonna do a lot of good. Yeah, <laughs> pulse grenade. Here and all kinds of little sounds like wires being tripped, but I guess not. Yeah, figured that was heading outside. I almost wonder if this is, um, if you could find some up here, like, what? We are so close. I can't even see where the stupid thing is. Oh, 
Where is everybody here? Did I kill him? Did the Brotherhood kill him? Yes. Let's come on down. Did you already jump down or is that an enemy? Okay. Where are these places that we are so close to? Boston Bugle Building. Alright, we found one. There's another place. Yeah, right up there we've never been to. So we might have to go there and then go back over to the amphitheater and kind of go from there to find the other two. <coughs> I am guessing that if we ever wanted paper, that this would be the place to come. How? Uh... Going up. I guess my question is, why was he hostile? I'm not carrying too much. I pick up a coffee cup. All right, let's see. Got all these mines that I don't need. Got an extra missile launcher. Nothing special. <laughs> See, what should have been a mine that should have blown me away? Dance, where are you? Rates? Nope. Rude? No. Hide? Could be. Hole? Could be. Okay. Trumpeting truth for over 50 years. You must not be a real newspaper then. Copyright Boston Bugle 2077. Article is not to be reprinted without permission of the editor in chief. Arc 1. Case closed in crime boss Eddie Winter. In a move that shocked and angered people in Massachusetts, Boston Police Department announced last night they have ceased all investigations into the actions of reputed organized crime boss Edward Eddie Winter. Speaking on behalf of the Special Task Force, has been assembled especially to build a case against Winter. Captain and John, that's a heck of an opening for a sentence. <laughs> Speaking on behalf of the Special Task Force, that has been assembled specifically to build a case against Winter. Captain Jonathan Winmar Widmark of the BPD said, after reviewing the Dude! This sentence goes on for days. That's one sentence. After reviewing the evidence with our colleagues at the Bureau of Alcohol, Drugs, Tobacco, Firearms, and Lasers, it became clear that we were, in fact, wrong. Eddie Winter has indeed had a colorful history, but it is not a criminal history. By pursuing our case against Mr. Winter, we would simply continue to waste taxpayer dollars and, even worse, condemn an innocent man. It was an unexpected turn of events, to be sure, according to the Boston Bugle's 
confidential sources within the Boston Police Department, the innocent man was anything but. As uncovered by Captain Widmark's official investigation, codename Operation Winter's End, Eddie Winter was involved in every crime imaginable from petty larceny to first degree murder. And although nothing was proved, everyone on Widmark's task force suspected Winter in the August homicide death of their lead detective's fiance, a Miss Jennifer Lands. Whatever the truth, it would appear the city of Boston has nothing more to fear from Eddie Winter. When approached for comment, the alleged crime boss could not be reached. In fact, his South Boston sub shop has been shuttered and his Harborside residence completely cleaned out. Eddie Winter, it would seem, has disappeared. China Showdown. War. War. Uh, has there been any extended period of time in recent memory in which soldiers have not fought, bled, and died, all for the sake of furthering the political goals of one government or another? The shorter answer is not. Nah. The longer, more terrifying answer is that we have not yet begun to experience the extent of human suffering. From Anchorage and frigid Alaska to Shantou on our enemy's doorstep, American troops have been embroiled in brutal battle. They have taken and lost many lives, a nearly uncountable number, but not entirely, because the truth is the casualties have been countable. These conflicts, however horrible, have all been, in some inexplicable, perverted way, manageable. Through taxes and various wartime revenues, the United States government has been able to fund a standing army with uh, the likes of which this country has never before seen. The same is certainly true of our mortal foe of China. And with each dollar spent comes a natural accounting of how each dollar was spent. Every bullet, every bunker busting bomb, every body bag, soon after each is used in the theater of war, we know every how, when, and where. But the sad, obvious truth is that the days of manageable war have nearly come to an end. In the minds of the world's great leaders, these billions of dollars have merely been spent. They've been wasted. Because here we are, after more than a decade of constant warfare, with no clear end and no clear winner in sight. So really, at this point, what other option do these superpowers have, if not the nuclear one? And therein, of course, lies the rub. For when China or the United States launches its nuclear missiles and drops its atomic bombs, there will be no one left to count the casualties, let alone the ordnance. No one left to declare victory. So when only one question remains, is there any way the powers of the world can prevent a nuclear apocalypse? If, if there is any hope left for the world, we must believe the answer is yes. But these are hopeless times. In what can only be described as a scene of absolute pandemonium on Friday afternoon, soldiers of the United States Army 184th Infantry Regiment opened fire on a group of unarmed civilians after an unknown person smashed the plate glass window of the Roxbury Food Bank, prompting several people in line outside the storm into the establishment. As of yesterday evening, at least four people were confirmed dead and eight others injured, but Jonathan Corman, spokesman for the Army, insists the troops acted within their authority. The soldiers in question issued explicit verbal warning several times. These people knew exactly what would happen if they broke the line and attacked the food bank. Hunger is no excuse for civil disobedience, vandalism, or in this case, starting a riot that puts the lives of every civilian in the area at risk. It is the role of the United States Army to maintain order in this difficult time, and that is exactly what happened in this instance. I would also like to point out that the soldiers of the 184th Infantry Regiment have not had food ration in two days. These men and women understand hunger probably better than anyone. It is a response the American people have grown accustomed to as violent scenes like the one in Roxbury have played out again and again. Across the country, as a starving populace tries desperately to obtain food for its families, and as has happened so many times in the past, the civilian witnesses of the so-called riot tell a different tale. 85-year-old grandmother Hannah Henry was in line at the food bank and claims the soldiers had anything but order and liberty in their minds. They were laughing, joking about who they were going to shoot first. It was all a game to them. These soldiers may not have fired on the crowd before the window got broke, but they was looking forward to it all the same. One can only hope that the violence in Roxbury will help, will be the last such incident our country has to suffer through. But until America finds the strength to question its domestic policies and the food to feed its people, the future remains uncertain. Dude, these articles. White House remains empty. Where's the president? For more than half a year, the West Wing of America's most famous residence has remained shrouded in near-complete darkness. A skeleton crew of annual laborers remains on staff to maintain the property, but nobody has lived or worked politically there for several months. And even though the White House press corps has unofficially and unceremoniously disbanded around the same time, the media has remained steadfast in answering the most important of questions. Where is our president? Well, he's a computer up in Raven Rock. At first, the assumption was that the entirety of the United States government had moved operations to Raven Rock. 
The military operations center located in the mountains region of Pennsylvania, just a few miles northeast of the presidential retreat in Camp David, Maryland. But further investigations have revealed that neither the president nor his cabinet have been to Raven Rock Complex in over a year. So if not Reagan, Raven Rock, then where? Thanks to an extensive and exhaustive investigation, the Boston Beagle has uncovered the answer and our readers will likely consider it as strange as it is shocking. The president has been leading our country from a Poseidon oil, energy oil rig just off the coast of San Francisco. It's certainly an odd choice for a presidential command center, or is it? Not as much as it may seem as our investigation discovered. Thanks to the testimony of a highly placed anonymous source, the Boston Beagle has learned that the official designation of an oil rig is actually Control, control Station Enclave, giving credence to the long-running rumors of a secret militarized shadow government known as the Enclave that would take control of the United States in the event of a nuclear conflagration. So I don't know. And so the mystery of the missing president has finally been solved, but in doing so, has the Boston Beagle also uncovered evidence that the end of the world in the form of total atomic war is also at hand. Sadly, the president's alliance seems to speak volumes. I need a drink. <laughs> oh, okay. Boston headed first World Series since 1918. That'll never happen. <clears throat> As every resident of Boston is painfully aware, it's been 159 years since the city has reveled in the joy of the World Series victory. Whether from strikeout, air in the outfield, or a ball that rolls disaster through an infielder's legs, the feeders remain our constant unwelcome companion, but not for long. In what has been one of the most exciting World Series races in decades, Boston has achieved a three games to none lead over the unbeatable Texas favorite. Batting, fielding, and pitching have all aligned, thanks largely to the direction of legendary coach Dusty Wilder giving this year's team the best chance they've had for victory in, well, forever. Even more encouraging than Game 4 being played here in Boston is the fact that the team has yet to utilize their star pitcher, Matt the Missile Murtaugh. With him on the mound, some of the actually predicting not only a series-shattering win, but a no-hitter to boot. Yes, for years, the concession stands of Boston have fed baseball fans a steady diet of beer, hot dogs, peanuts, and bitter defeat. But on Saturday, October 23rd, 2077, the only thing that could snatch away victory is an act of God or some obscenely calamity of man. Tomorrow, my friends, the unthinkable will finally come to pass, as life in Boston will never be the same again. Yeah, that was probably supposed to be a joke, but... <laughs> okay. Oh my god, is it time to kill the video now? <laughs> it took forever to read all that. Okay, Dorpen, Dorpen. No! <laughs> I do not want to go out there yet. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't take my click. Oh. Um, okay, so that's just the way back up if you fall down there. There's probably really nothing. But it's just not. I'm a little surprised that's all there is here. the same articles hopefully it's not a whole bunch of new ones my voice is going <laughs> turn jump so it's not guru cult down nice good let's call it even all right. Where? Are you? So this is this is it, huh? Okay. I don't know why Dan didn't come with me. <coughs>
All right. Is that in the direction of the... Oh, hi. Um, that's not... Yeah, so still around here and here, I guess. Are you going to start firing on something over there? So that means whatever building... Something firing on him. Where? What is that doing? Oh, thank you. Sweet. Not much of it. What is that? lit up like that. Hmm. Well, where do I go? Let's go to the amphitheater. There was two places close to that. I don't know if as soon as we land in here, you know, are people going to be hostile towards me or it's very possible. I'm a little surprised there's people here again. Because I'm trying to remember, did I... I killed whoever the deacon was or whatever. Because wasn't it like some kind of a cult? Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's just... I don't know. Yep, all right. How do we get up here? Yeah. this place. Alright, we ready to come in? 